Dork Lair. Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Gomez Clan of the Golden Dragon action figure that was included in their massive bundle of stuff that they released for MezcoCon, which is what they are doing in lieu of an in-person San Diego Comic-Con, an expensive bundle. It was $170. And so I think, you know, some people might have been a little put off by the price point of this when you kind of factor in all that other stuff. I will say this, I don't think this would have been an $85 figure. I think this would have been $125, maybe $115 at the cheapest because of all of the stuff that comes with all of the really intricate paint applications on the weapons. So, you know, you're talking about an extra, maybe like an extra 45, maybe an extra 50 bucks for all the swag. I think the value is there overall, but for a lot of people, they just don't want the stuff. They would rather dump the $50 of extra goodies and just pay 125 for this guy. Anyway, uh, yeah, this thing's awesome. I'm glad they went with this bold choice. I know some people think, why would a ninja ever wear a bright gold color or whatever but i don't know man like scorpion's been around forever he's ninja with gold i don't whatever it's fantasy world anyway um awesome figure i'm really excited to dig into this thing so let's get into this review all right so for the packaging it's a little bit tall so i got a pan here but um really it's quite basic packaging for such a deluxe set the, I'm a little surprised at how simple the packaging is. I wonder if they had to like shift gears on what they were originally planning because this is basically a shoebox with a sticker on it. Um, it's just a shoebox, really. They do have all of the information on the side here, but other than that sticker, it's really just a black shoebox. Oddly, it came with an extra of the sticker. So. You know, that's kind of a nice little add on there. I don't mind the box. It's fine. It's just kind of a weird decision for them to go with a sh basically a shoe box instead of some of the other premium things they've been doing. I mean, they've been doing lunch boxes. The Baron Ben's box is incredible, um, but it's fine. I mean, it holds the figure and everything's in there and it's fairly compact compared to a lot of Mesco boxes. So um, yeah, it's fine. It's just very simplistic. All right, so let's start off with a look at the details of the figure itself. Just a quick pan through of Gomez here. And um, <clears throat> starting off with the head sculpt, this is the main head sculpt. There are three different heads, all of which I like very much, and we'll get to the others in the accessories. Now, because I use a black background whenever I do black, it tends to be slightly problematic, but if you can see, there's definitely a shininess to most of the head sculpt. And then there's like a bit of a gray shadow or shading going on um, throughout the kind of like the insect wrinkles and stuff of his head. And then the eyes are not the translucent eyes of some of the other Gomez figures. They are solidly painted in a slightly more metallic gold than the, um, than the golden Gomez. So I kind of like, I think it's a little bit more metallic. I kind of like this better. I don't love the paint on that head. So I did mention that the eyes are painted solid, but you can get some of that kind of translucency through them and you can see the insect eye under there. So it's pretty thin layer of that solid paint, but um, you know, once you shine a light behind it, you can actually see into there. So I was a little bit wrong about that, but yeah, that's pretty sweet. Kind of moving down again, the lighting's difficult here, but you can kind of see that so he's got a brown neck and then he's got a turtleneck on under there, a little sweater like turtleneck. And then the ninja outfit itself is fantastic. I love the colors. I love that they have like a nice um, black trim to accent the colors there. The pants are a little weird. Like they're definitely like baggy at the waist. So you have to kind of futz around with the belt to, to cover up where that edges of the pants a little bit. On the back of it, you have this um, kind of Mezco inlay or overlay stuff with the dragon. And that's actually a couple colors. Like it's got the outline of the dragon and then it's got the sort of rest of the overlay. You can see there's like a yellow and then like a slightly more mustardy yellow. That's the outline of the dragon. So decent look there at the dragon. Get to the bottom here. The belt is removable. I'm kind of afraid to remove it because I don't know if I'm going to be able to tie it back. I'm going to probably take a picture of it and then at some point I'll remove the belt 
and mess around with it because you can thread some of the accessories onto the belt. I'm just not ready to take the belt off yet because just a lot going on with this figure and there's not that much time in the day. Um, so yeah, so the mustardy kind of gold suit is pretty sweet. I like it very much. I love the look of it. Um, I like the shade of it. It's not too golden. And like I said, it's more of like a mustardy type of a color. The wrist guards, which I think are different from the Shadow Assassin, have some intricate sculpt work going on there. Then there's the same kind of style here in the um, shin guards. Just to note, I don't think you can remove the shin guards or the wrist guards because, so the, the actual yellow fabric is sewn together with the black fabric down here and then these shin guards are actually attached they're not a separate piece like these little straps i don't think they're a separate piece they're sort of either stitched on there or glued on there uh, so you can't pop those on and off unfortunately and then finally the feet with the sort of ninja split toe shoes here you can kind of see the sculpt work there and then the bottom they have some treads and they have a hole for the peg stand but yeah this is just a really sharp looking figure um and when we get into the other head sculpts you'll see they are also very very well done in fact, I actually prefer the second head to this one. Um, this head actually looks pretty cool on this guy. So that's actually a pretty sweet look. I know the neck is a different color, but you know, once you kind of get it on there, it looks pretty cool. I think it matches him really well. And one thing I forgot to mention about the suit when I was going over it is that there are two holes in the top. You can pop the antenna off and then pull the hood up and then pop them back in. All right, and so let's see how he stacks up next to some other figures. First up, a couple Agent Gomez's. On the left, we have the Roach with the golden head. On the right, we have the Crimson Roach, AKA the Blood Agent. Here's a couple other Gomez body figures. On the left is the Diabolique. On the right is the uh, Pink Skull. Here he is next to the Mezco Batman Onyx Edition Sovereign Knight. I tried to switch the head because I thought this head would look really cool on Sovereign Knight, but the pegs are a different size. And then on the right is a movie realization body with a Gomez skull head um, that I painted and sort of a uh, samurai doc nocturnal kind of look. And finally, a couple other lines. There's a Mythic Legion's Vampire Lucretia on the left and then an Articulated Icon's uh, ninja, I mean, it's a samurai that I took the parts off of to make it into a red ninja, but um, pretty small compared to the Gomez figures. All right, for accessories, where to begin? There's so many. Let's start with the other heads. So first off, you have this, uh, the more detailed of the two sort of Gomez Rochi heads, ant heads or what have you. I, this is my favorite head. This head's awesome. I just love the color with the sort of the black wash in there. Very nicely painted, the shiny eyes. I love this head. This is the head I will have him with on the shelf. It's also the head in the uh, thumbnail of the video. This is the very roachy roach head, also painted really well. Uh, this head is like super creepy and weird, and I don't put him on my figures very much, but this is a really cool looking one. I like that one very much. I'm gonna try to move kind of quickly because there's so many accessories. All right, so the other big accessory is actually a character whose name is Boom Boom, and she is his sidekick, and this is the uh, boom box that opens up, and inside you can put in these little inserts, and then you can stick the weapons inside these inserts. So like there's cutouts for like these um, throwing knives and, and so on. So yeah, and just so you know, this is actually painted a little bit differently than the one that comes with the um, the roach with the golden head. On the left is the roach with the golden head boom box, and on the right is the um, golden dragon version. And there's two inserts, by the way, two kind of different styles. You can have one with the throwing stars or one with the, I think the nunchucks go in there. Um, you, both of them have spots for the, uh, for the, knife, the throwing knives. Next up, we have the little grub. And I think of all the different grubs they've done, this is the best painted one. I know they've done the, the gold one, um, and then they've done sort of the one that came with Lone Roach, the original grubby grub. But this one's very detailed. Some more storage. He's got this waste pouch. It's got all these little slots and 
elastics and you can store a bunch of stuff on here and then it opens up as well it's got a zipper inside there's a little foam thing but i think you could probably store the quiver in there and then like have that sticking out and that's how you would attach the quiver to him another pouch that can go on his belt and then this one sort of opens up maybe throw some of the uh, throwing stars in there but you got a loop for the belt another pouch almost like a shoulder pouch and then it's got two slots for uh the swords you could pro i mean it only comes with one katana but you could maybe put one of the katanas and one of the i forget the, the the shorter um short swords in there and then there's one slot on the back as well so maybe katana there and then the two and then the two short swords there reversed so yeah so maybe something like that and again i'm not like a ninja expert um so if i'm kind of like getting this stuff wrong let me know in the comments so speaking of which, we have the katana, nicely painted sheath with a little gold accent there. The handle is painted black with some, again, some gold accents, and then the blade is gold. Two sort of short swords or long daggers, if you will. Big spear, polearm type weapon. It's kind of cool. It's got a silver edge to the blade. So there's like this fade into this silver edge out of that yellow. I think these are supposed to be like a version of like the climbing claws that a lot of ninjas have. Um, but they're more like a weapon that almost like a Wolverine claws or something like that. Like they're not, they don't go on the palm, they go on the outside of the hand. So they're not exactly for climbing, but I think they're inspired by that type of thing. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. Comes with two sides, comes with three throwing knives, very nicely painted. These are very small, very intricately painted. And then comes with four throwing stars, four grenades, two of these like knuckler weapons here. Those are going to make for some pretty cool poses. I think those might be new. I'm not sure which of these weapons are new because I don't have any of the Shadow Assassins. Comes with two of these um, sort of chain weapons with the blade on one end and the ball on the other. There's one with two blades and then there's one with a single hook type blade. Comes with a grappling hook. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a string attached. I just haven't unwound it. I don't really want to have to try to put it back on there because I don't think I'll really use this or pose it or take pictures with this. Really nice pair of nunchucks. These look fantastic. Nice little metal chain there. Some fine detail paintwork. Nice pieces there. And then one small dagger type weapon. Curved blade. Comes with his bow. Beautifully painted. Again, all of these like really fine little gold accents that were missing on um, the golden gold mez, golden roach are all here on this and they look fantastic and this kind of makes me think oh this is what that one should have looked like and then here we have the quiver of arrows that i think you can put in that pouch or maybe um maybe even just tuck it into his his shirt or something but um yeah you can probably put that into the pouch and then he does have two arrows here with two different types of tips so just a ton a ton of accessories i mean that's just the weapon so now we also have a set of stickers he comes with this um, smoke effect that's very flimsy, but it looks really cool. I had the same kind of comments about the Baron Benz one where it just feels super cheapo. Um, that's the inside of it. It's a little shinier, uh, but the smoke effect there. But, you know, as you shine light into it, you know, it kind of glows a little bit and it looks great. This one's not as stable as the Baron Benz one. Um, it kind of rocks. The Baron Benz one sat super flat. But maybe if I heat it up just a slight bit, I might be able to get it to kind of bend back to the position where it'll go flat. And then it's also got this um, sort of cape or cloak or whatever. It's like this tattered scarf type thing that you can wrap around him and get him into some cool looks and poses with, with this piece. So this will be a nice effect for you know, some posing and stuff. Okay, then he's got a whole bunch of hands. This is a, he comes with the fists on there, and then he's got these two um, regular gripping hands. He's got a pa pair of hands here where one is a trigger finger, and then one is a two-pointing finger. He's got another set of gun hands. So this is for create. This is probably like the sniper rifle type thing, even though it doesn't come with the like, guns. But um, you know, he's got the trigger finger hand here and then cradling the barrel of the gun there. Two gesturing action hands, what maybe like ninja wall crawling hands type things. Here's the patented Gomez middle finger. 
and then one regular pointing finger. And then here's the grenade holding hand. Now this is for the canister grenade that comes with the other Gomez figures. This figure does not come with those types of grenades. Um, and then one more trigger finger there. All said, he comes with 14 hands. And he's got the five inch Mezco stand with the peg in it that you can swap out for the arm, the flight stand. And he's also got the Spidey clasp that you can magnetize and have him sticking to the wall. And real quick, I know I said that I wasn't gonna review the bundle per se, but I love this five points figure that came with it. I mean, just look at those eyes. That must be vac metal, which you don't see a lot of companies doing anymore. Um, and the sword and the shoes, man, this thing is so cool. I think I'll probably do a separate review of this if I have a chance. Okay, so for articulation, um, I put this other head on here because I think you'll just be able to see it a little bit better. Um, anyway, the head can look down quite a bit and then it can look up um, about that much. So pretty good articulation in the neck, side to side, lots of movement um, all throughout. The base of the neck moves, the top of the neck moves, lots of great motion in that head. Shoulders swing up really well. When you're moving the figure around, you have the tendency to sort of hold the fabric and then you move it and it feels like you're not able to get that range. But if you kind of shift around with the fabric, you can get his arms way up high. Of course, they can swing and the fabric will kind of get in the way there. But again, as you shift the fabric around, you could swing, potentially swing them all the way around if, um, you know, if you kept shifting that fabric. And then there is a swivel at the bicep double jointed elbows, move the fabric, or in this case, the arm guard out of the way and he'll get right up there with that elbow articulation. You can swivel the wrist and hinge the wrist as well. Um, upper torso has a crunch and then the waist has a crunch. So if you kind of get all of that together, it's hard to show each one separately, but if you get all that together, he can crunch forward that much and then he can crunch backward that much. Um, he can twist, he can side to side, lots of great motion in that torso. The leg can kick up quite a bit. And this, I think, is the same body as the Spider-Man pretty close to. So he's got a lot of like spidey um, motion here. The splits, he can go out really far into the splits. You can twist his leg at the top. And again, it's hard to see what I'm doing here because of all the... Um, baggy fabric, but that leg can twist. Double jointed knee kicks all the way up. And then the foot can spin. It can point down. It can point not too far up. And again, the, the guard is going to get in the way and there's not really much getting around that. You do see a little bit of the foot down there when you kick, the, kick it up, but shift things around and um, you can get that out of the way. The feet twist and they have some pretty good ankle rockers as well. So wide stances are definitely possible with this guy, which is good for a ninja. You want a ton of great articulation and this pretty much delivers. Um, super happy with this figure. This video has been super long. So um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, may the force be with you.